right then, it is uh, coming up to uh, 12 o'clock now, so I think most people can legitimately say it's perhaps time for a biscuit. Cardi P's Biscuit Breakdown. It is indeed Cardi P's Biscuit Breakdown, but I am now on a diet. Tech up, Dave. <laughs> That's enough, oh from you. That's That's enough laughter well, from you. Well, we're on day three. We're on day three. I'm on a 16-8 diet. I weighed myself this week. It was not pleasant reading. And I'm on the 16-8 diet. What does so that mean? The 16-8 diet is basically you fast for 16 hours and then there's an eight-hour window in which you can eat. So despite the fact you've brought in these delicious Maltesers cake bars, I'm not sure they're going to do... I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're going to do much good for my diet anyway. But you can eat within an eight-hour period. You're not supposed to eat rubbish, but I think a little cake bar would probably be all right. So thank you for bringing this it, in. It's consumer research. It is consumer <clears throat> research. And you've brought in some custard creams yes. as well. Well, they're yes. biscuits. They are biscuits, yes, indeed. Whereas a cake bar is, of course, a cake bar. A cake. Yeah. And after last week when it came out that we shouldn't be bringing cake to the office. That's right, Let's yes. break the rules. That's right. Well, that's it. We always break the rules. And we are both rule breakers and rule makers and rule breakers. Yes. But uh, yes, because um, this is the Food Standard Agency saying bringing cake to work was not a good idea. So you have defied, defied their edict. Yes. Well, there we are. There we are. You're, you're, you're... you get fired, do cake. Well, that, that's it. That's it. Um, so um, there was quite a reaction last <laughs> week, um, Tech Up Dave, to, yes. to, to a picture of you. Uh, this was, of course, the uh, controversy. Well, interesting story about uh, the Mr. Blobby costume yes. that went on uh, went online. But uh, then there was a picture of Tech Up Dave with no, that's Noel Edmonds. Uh, yeah, that's that's Noel the Edmonds. original Mr. That's Blobby. That's the original Mr. Blobby with Noel Edmonds. That is not Tech Up Dave. Uh, so there is now a picture of Tech Up Dave. We're showing on the screen, and I tweeted out. And there's some radio listeners who don't watch on, t yes. on Talk TV who were have been reacting to this. This is you at Blackpool Tar. Yes. And back in 2015, back in where 2015. I won doing Hooker Duck, Mr. Blobby. Hooker Duck, Mr. Blobby. So you've got Mr. Blobby there. And I should say for those who are watching on, on oh, sorry, listening on talk radio rather than watching talk TV, that, that Blackpool Tower does look as if it's coming out of your head It there. does, which is unfortunate and down to my daughter who took the photograph. Yeah, well, Louise, she works here as well. Um, uh, we're family business here at... at, at you, you've got Mr. Blobby I with you. I brought Mr. Blobby with you've me today. You've got Mr. Blobby with you. You've got him in the studio. So Excellent. I thought just to prove that I won him at I'm Hooker very Duck. impressed. Let's, let's have a look at him, hand him over here. Um, he's go. still got the label on him, my goodness. I know. So, I mean, are Mr. you thinking Blobby? of selling Mr. Blobby? Because I don't um, know. Since, since they're the... the um, since the, uh, I'll just hold them here, uh, because on eBay, what, what was the final bid for the, the Mr. Blobby costume? The final bid on that costume that we were talking about last week was £62,101. Wow. 178 bids. And what, 178 bids, but, but what's happened since then? But what's happened since then I'll is... I'll Blobby back. Oh, OK. Uh, lots of, oh, two more Mr Blobby costumes have appeared on, on eBay. On eBay, right. And how much are they going for? One is currently at £8,000 and the other one is at... Fifteen thousand. Well, that's a bargain, pounds. isn't it? But nobody's bid on either of them. No one's bid on them. No. Oh, this so, is the reserve bid. Okay. So if you if you'd put up money up towards sixty grand for the other one, sixty grand for Mister Blobby Condo. That is yeah. ridiculous. Um, anyway, sorry. What I was going to say. Can we show the picture of Dave again? Uh, well, at at uh, at uh, Blackpool. Yes. Yeah, so he's got um, someone. Uh, Cy Barber has photo. Presumably, this person knows about photo. Says yes. you can tell he's at the tech end of the job. He has a has a, has a large antenna growing out of the top of his head. <laughs> that is Blackpool Tower. Yes. I should uh, say. Uh, and then pu the Punny World. Yes. The most hilarious one has a Polish friend who's a sound technician, and a Czech one too. And a Czech one too. And a Czech yeah. one too. Very good. Yes. But there was also we well, were talking about uh, my uh, hooker duck thing. Yes. And I said about Basil Brush. Oh yes, you also won a Basil Brush at Hook, Hooker Duck. Basil's <laughs> come with me today. He's <laughs> got well. Basil Brush as well. Wow, that's that's quite. Hand Basil over here. I mean, that's you won this at Hooker Duck as well. Yeah. This, I mean, you're pretty good at Hook a Duck. Yeah, this I'm the person is, to go with. This is Basil Brush here. <laughs> Hello. Boom, boom. Hello, boom, boom, indeed. <laughs> um, interestingly, Benny uh, was in touch on Twitter. He says, blimey, I always thought Dave was a young bloke. Yes. Not that I can I talk. I think you should have Mr Blobby over there as Mr. well. Mr Blobby over here as well, yes, Perfect. indeed. And, uh, yes. Much better. There we are. We've got, we've got both of these. <laughs> so, uh, both Basil Brush and... Uh, Mr. Blobby, no doubt, talking much more sense than Dave or me. Um, we also had, we're, we're not doing the cat of the week just at the moment, no. but uh, we will do it a little bit later on. Um, so Spark Sparky, who was in touch last week, says, thank you very much indeed for featuring Bilbo on your cat of the week. We're thrilled. He seems to know he's a very happy cat. We bring joy wherever we go. We try. Indeed. Now, uh, Mr. Blobby, obviously, this costume is in the is in the news, but uh, people's, I'm just going to set these over here yeah, just, uh, just for a second. Um, the, people's uh, workplace attire 
is in the is in the news. And of course, anyone watching on Talk TV will see that you have uh, you're wearing a hoodie today. Yes. But of course, you have a range of uh, ridiculously offensive uh, shirts that you've been wearing at various. I points. didn't know anything about this feature today well, until well, I got here. We're going to talk to Richard Harrison, who is HR mm -hmm. advisory manager at Peninsula, because this is an interesting one. This is in terms of how people uh, their attire at work and what is appropriate in the workplace and uh, if I can just find the article which is eluding me at <laughs> the moment you know? and there's just so many of them there's, there's fly so beast stuff oh gosh it's a, right yes now. it's not good oh yes dress go. dress for a high-end London club not the office firm tells its lawyers this is gold leather trousers and purple velvet jackets now allowed at Vardags as a new dress code decries the shirt and tie as the domain of bankers and um, it is often appearances that matter one law firm has told staff they can ditch sharp suits and instead dress in a way that will bring your personality to work well you often bring your personality yeah. to Yes. Uh, Dave, I'm not sure it should come with you, uh, but uh, there we are. Let's talk to Richard oh, Harrison, who's <laughs> HR advisory manager at, at Peninsula. Richard, very welcome to Talk TV. How are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. Yeah, good morning. Well, nice you're, you're you. wearing a suit on a Saturday morning. Uh, <laughs> court appearance or? No, 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 no court appearance today. Um, but yeah, I am in a suit. Very, very different to, to you guys, but uh, it, it makes me feel comfortable. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel ready for the day. I, I feel ready for work. And uh, that's kind of, and what, 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 kind what, of should, what should we be wearing for for to, to work? I mean, Dave, Dave is is behind the scenes most of the time and he is wearing a hoodie. I think he's perfectly attired for work. We have uh, some dapper snappers in the office. Phil Dave, of course, is a bit of a dapper snapper, wears uh, some some uh, very sharp suits. I have been criticised for my bland blandness in terms of I, I stick to the old uh, blue, white and, and pink shirts. I don't I don't have any shirts that aren't blue, white or pink. Um, and, uh, you know, a bit of a suit if I'm doing the political under stuff. I mean, what, what should people wear at work or does it depend on the workplace, Richard? It, it does. You're absolutely right, Peter. I mean, what we need to think about is, uh, is, is the policies that are in place that determine the dress codes for employees. Um, employers are entitled to set those dress codes. So if they want people to come in and in, into work in suits or, you know, smart uh, business attire, then they are entitled to set that. Um, we have seen a bit of a trend of, in companies moving to more uh, a casual attire for, for work and uh, and also with the COVID pandemic as well, you know, lots of people were working from home and I think that's also sparked uh, a bit of a move to, to casual uh, attire as well. Speaking, speaking of casual attire, Richard, we've just had a bit of a strip show in the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the Chip and Dales have nothing on Tech Up Dave, Chip, Chip and Dave, one might call them, in that you've taken off your, uh, your hoodie and you're now wearing this ludicrous Hawaiian shirt. Well, I get so I've had loads of complaints recently because of the dull shirts I've been wearing on Indeed, air. Indeed, yes. Yeah, so you've, you've so, so, so I, I came Magic in, Mike came in the uh, Larry Hawaiian one this morning with the hoodie because it was cold. When yeah, I well, it was. Yeah, well, and, I, I and when I found out what was going on, I, I didn't take it off because we thought this was quite funny. Well, that shows that shows your personality <laughs> definitely, Richard. What do you, what do you make? Does. I mean, if you were tech up, Dave, if you were tech up, Dave, would you be wearing the hoodie or would you be wearing the Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> I mean, I think the shirt looks fantastic. Uh, uh, Good. Dave. Yeah, that, that makes one of us. <laughs> the important thing about dress codes, I think, is that, you know, when employers are in, 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 implementing these in, into the workplace, or even changing or updating them, that they're also considering that they're not indirectly or directly discriminated against well, other what, people. What, what, that's well. an interesting point, actually, because if you say, oh, it has to, you know, bring out your personality, it's got to be a fashion show. I mean, the point of school uniforms, usually, is that it doesn't encourage a competitive nature amongst children, who can often be very competitive in terms of what they're wearing. Many of them, of course, will have more money than others. They can afford trainers or shirts or whatever. But the idea of school uniform is everybody wears the same thing. Everybody pays the same amount of money or their parents usually for that for that uh, clothing. Therefore, you know, it, it's sort of not not uh, distracting in any way, unlike that horrendous shirt that Tech Up Dave's wearing. <laughs> I, 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 th I think a consideration is the the industry that the business operates in, uh, the, the the workplace uh, culture, the, the the ethos, the branding that they want to deliver as well. So with schools, you have school uniforms because they have the badge, they have a certain you know uh, look that they want to give off a professional uh, you know organised look, and uh, and employers are entitled to do that as well. Uh, yes, they can be flexible, you know, with the dress codes in place and. Um, certainly speak to staff about what's appropriate, what, what might not necessarily be appropriate. But I think I think the days have, have, have gone by now of, of saying men must wear this or women yeah. should wear this in the workplace. Well, I hate ties. I mean, you're wearing a tie, um, uh, Richard, and you look very smart. 
Uh, but I, I, I really don't like wearing ties at all. And I, I just, I mean, I, around Parliament, for example, most people wear ties. But in the parliamentary chamber these days, you don't even have to wear ties. And people say, oh, it's disgraceful how these things are going and so on. But it is, and, and dress codes in general are generally more straightforward for men than they are for women because men uh, certainly in, in a sort of professional kind of law firm like this one we're talking about or something else do tend to wear shirts or ties or whatever but it, it's more difficult for women of course we're three men having this conversation but I mean <laughs> what, what is smart casual? Oh, that is a very good question. It's a million dollar question, isn't it? And I think, you know, I mean, that's certainly a peninsula. We have our dress down days as well, and, but we do still expect smart casual. Um, there are certain things that an employer can say that they don't require or they don't want to see in the workplace. So uh, if we are having a, a smart casual, we don't expect sportswear or we don't expect, uh, you know, team uh, shirts with, with the football teams emblazoned on them, for example. So there are still parameters in, in that uh, rule around smart casual. And, and but because it, can be, it can be difficult, Richard, to sort of please everybody. Everybody, you want not too smart, not too casual, not too sexy, not too revealing. Um, I mean, what, what's the? You know, it, it can be hard to kind of when you don't have a sort of in the old days where you know men wear a bowler hat and a suit and a tie. That was that was a, a form of uniform to yourself. But things are a bit different these days, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've I've gone away with the uh, the bowler hat. I certainly don't don't wear one of those. But uh, I, I wear a bowler I, hat as often as yeah. possible. <laughs> I think the important thing is that employers and employees are working together. The employees are understanding what the employer's expectations are in regards to dress codes and also why those reasons are in place. It's really important to have that objective justification as to why you're asking people to wear certain things. There could also be health and safety implications in dress codes as well. So I think, I think Dave's, Dave's, Dave's uh, suit, uh, shirt is probably flammable. <laughs> I've been as told I've broken everybody's near telly. Matches. <laughs> well, indeed, he's been he's been in touch. He, someone's been in touch. Say you've broken uh, their telly. Phil, Dave, excellent. Yeah. We've broken the cameras. Well, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Richard, thank you so much. That's Richard Harrison. He's an HR advisory manager at Peninsula. I mean, most HR people I've come across in my, in my life have a, a sliver of ice in their heart, uh, to be honest. But Richard seems to be fairly sort of reasonable, decent yes, human nice being. His, his, his colleague Kate, Kate Palmer comes on as well. Um, he so, likes my shirt. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I said it was. A nice guy and say good judgment <laughs> sorry Richard yeah well indeed well I think put the hoodie back on is probably a good idea um Dave okay I'll go back into the, the no thank you no I, I thank you very very much indeed for everything for the custard creams for the Maltesers cake bar I will be having that at one minute past one um it's going to be going to be uh, what I'll be having yeah um Wayne from Barry has been in touch uh, as, again uh, he is the one who's commenting on Tech Up Dave's attire he says I saw Gemma Forte selling beauty products this morning on a shopping channel I think it was QVC actually because that's where she she sells um, products I have, a, I have a good friend who's a big fan of QVC who's a big fan of Gemma Forte as well are you sure Tech Up Dave's not left you uh, with his avatar because I've just seen in his hoodie flowing <laughs> heavy duty drill bits okay that, that's that's almost too surreal to read out but I, I, I just have uh, what's also borderline surreal is Cat of the Week it's Cardi B's Cat of the Week. Well, the Cat of the Week is Om in Manchester. Uh, Om is uh, an adopted ragdoll kitty. We can see a picture of uh, Om now, I think, uh, has been sent in uh, by his, his owner and uh, ragdoll kitty. Uh, I'm an adopted ragdoll kitty who has poorly eyes. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll be having one of my eyes removed and hopefully after raising funds I will have an operation to save the sight of my other eye. Well, Om, we get, wish you all the very, very best uh, with that. That is uh, very, very difficult, of course, but uh, you look like an absolutely beautiful cat there white and grey and of course I will be tweeting out the picture of Om uh, after the programme so go to my Twitter at Peter Cardwell and uh, we have our cat of the week who is indeed Om.